Okay, I have two small, modest goals in this video. Uh, first of all, this is a response to uh, Libertas at Veritas and uh, Stargazer. Uh, first goal is I want to discuss a little bit more about what intersubjectivity really is and how it works. Uh, second goal is I want to scotch this notion. A claim has been made, echoing down through the ages, um, that societies never do anything. People do things, societies never do anything. Um, Margaret Thatcher made a, a comment to this regard. You know, there's no such thing as society. It's just people that do things. Um, yeah, I want to scotch this notion. <clears throat> so those are my two goals in this, this video here. All right, let's talk about something which seems to be easier for the anarchists to think about. <laughs> paper money. Um, objectively, paper money is a great example of something which has created uh, intersubjectivity. Objectively, paper money is, is just paper, right? It has no value whatsoever. Uh, the paper it's printed on, it really isn't worth very much. It has value only because everybody treats it as if it had value, right? This value is created intersubjectively. It's not, you know, an objective thing, right? <clears throat> so let's talk about how this works in, in markets, all right? It, 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 it boggles my mind, actually. Uh, the anarchists will say things like, societies never do anything, people do things. And then they'll turn around and say, the free market will take care of that. Uh, as if the free market, I mean, a market is a kind of society, okay? And it's actually is a quite a good model of how intersubjectivity works. Um, you don't seem to want to refi society, but then you talk about the market all the time. The market will do this, the free market will do this, the free market solution to this, you know, <clears throat> the invisible hand, all this kind of stuff, right? Okay. All right, let's talk about exactly how this works here. Uh, let's use a fun example. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway stock, Berk A, trading at around $100,000 these days. And here's how it works. I mean, how, do, how does the market determine what a share of, of Berkshire Hathaway stock is? Well, we have on one side, we have a whole bunch of people who want to sell the stock. And on the other side, we have a whole bunch of people who want to buy the stock, right? And everybody thinks it's, they've done all their research on Berkshire Hathaway. They have their opinions of... Uh, Warren Buffett, and so everybody thinks this share is worth a different price. I have listed some some uh, notable YouTubers down here. Uh, Veritas forty eight is very optimistic about this. He thinks the share of Berkshire Hathaway is worth one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Prof MTH is a little bit le more pessimistic, but he's still he's still pretty happy about it. <clears throat> and we have Veritas at Libertas here. He's he wants to sell. He thinks uh, he thinks the economy is pretty bad, and he wants to get rid of this stock. And he thinks he, it's worth about ninety five thousand dollars. On the other hand here, we have the buyers. We have Mr. Cropper here. He's not willing to put much in because he's trying to start his school, so he doesn't have a lot of money to spare in Berkshire Hathaway stock. So he'll pay $5 for it. Uh, Stargazer, he's uh, he's a, kind of kind of a skinflint too here. He, he, he uh, only is willing to pay $85,000. I'm kind of, you know, like on the high side here. Maybe I think it's worth $105,000, right? But... So uh, clearly, you know, it's like uh, the, the if the transaction is going to happen, it's between these two guys here, right? Well, there's an overlapping range here. But the thing is, I'm not going to bid $105,000, right? I want a deal, right? So I'm, I'm going to bid $100,000 and say, I really think, you know, subjectively, I think it's worth $105,000. I'd pay that much for it. But I'm going to bid $100,000. Veritas Libertas was only expecting to get $95,000, so he likes my bid. So he accepts my bid for, for $100,000, sold, right? This is, is just great, right? Because we both think we've got a deal here. We both think we scored 5000 bucks off the old one, and uh, off the other one, and, uh, you know, the deal, the deal works, okay? So <clears throat> that's how the market sets prices. Now, notice, it's, yeah, I mean, it's Veritas and Libertas and myself are, you know, the principal actors here. But this is a corporate decision. Everybody in this marketplace is participating in setting this price. It's not just like individual people are doing this. The marketplace is doing this. And by that I mean it's like, you know, the marketplace has to be there. If, if there were no mechanism for us to selling it, this price wouldn't be there. If the society wasn't there to protect our property rights about this, this price wouldn't be there. This is corporate, right? This isn't just me and Veritas Libertas and Randy Helsman out in the jungle someplace uh, doing this in a Robinson Crusoe fashion. Right. Moreover, even the people who didn't buy stocks here are participating. Right. I'm not going to uh, 
you know, Veritas and Libertas is not going to try to charge too high of a price here because he sees ProfMTH and he knows that ProfMTH might, might uh, you know, undercut him here, right? Similarly, you know, I, I, I can't offer too little because Stargazer is, uh, is going to come here. So, you know, the competition of the marketplace is what holds this price down and keeps this price down, right? Competition is the other people that are there, right? So a market price, guys, okay, please don't ever say again that societies never make decisions, okay? A market price is a societal decision on something, right? Everybody's got their own subjective prices, uh, but the intersubjective price is $100,000 here, all right? Notice the intersubjective price is different from everybody else's subjective price, right? Now, another thing which um, which comes up is, well, intersubjective agreement, does this mean you're like, uh, are you getting everybody to agree to the same thing? Well, no, that's not at all, right? Look, everybody here has a different price for the stock. Everybody's subjective price is different. Intersubjective agreement isn't saying, okay, I'll go to Veritas 48 and persuade him that the stock's worth 100,000. I'll go to Prof MTH and persuade him that the stock is worth, no. No, that's not how it works. I mean, you're never going to do that, right? Everybody has a different point of view in the world. Everybody has different stuffs, okay? But, you know, we can't get everybody to agree to the same subjective price. But we can get people to agree to the intersubjective price, right? It's, it's, it's um, you know, and here's, here's the interesting point. Suppose everybody did have the same subjective price. Suppose everybody thought the stock was worth $100,000 then no sales would happen whatsoever, right? Uh, think about that for a while. Why would no sales happen? Well, I mean, if if I think I wouldn't benefit, I have $100,000 and I, I value it that at, at one, you know, one share of Berkshire Hathaway, right? <clears throat> so does Veritas Libertas, Veritas at Libertas, right? Why would we trade? Uh, if we traded, we wouldn't be thinking we gained. In the previous example, we both thought we gained 5,000 bucks. But if we both ver value it at the same price, there's no reason for us to trade. We wouldn't, you know, trading wouldn't do anything. So basically, intersubjectivity requires subjective disagreement to work. Subjective disagreement is the engine of intersubjective agreement. Okay. So um, I hope this cl this clears it up here a little bit. Okay. Now let's let's talk about morality a little bit. I'm, I'm running out of time, but. Let's talk about morality a little bit. There's a lot of things here. It's not just setting the price of stuff. So, like, one moral question is, you know, what? when can you consent to have sex? You know, is it 14 years, like they do in Alabama? Is it 21 years? I mean, my wife thinks that our kids should probably have an age of consent of, like, 31, I think. But, uh, you know, different states have different things. Everybody's got their own opinion, right, of, of when the age of consent is. Uh, what we do is, is we sit and we decide together what we can live with, right? The age of consent 16 probably isn't what the majority of people would say is a good thing, but it's what the majority of people can live with, right? Abortion, when should abortion happen? First trimester, third trimester, you know, yeah, probably it doesn't matter, you know, some people object to morning after pills, but I, I can't really see the point of, of objecting to a morning after pill, but I probably would object to, um, you know, abortion happening right after a woman has gone into labor, right? When the, the baby is, is perfectly viable. So, but everybody's got their different opinion on this. And, you know, as a society, we said, well, what we can live with is three months, right? Now, who knows? Does life begin at three months? Does life begin at two months? Nobody knows. Three months is what we can live with, right? Everybody's got a different opinion. Marriage, one spouse, two spouses, ten spouses. Everybody has a different opinion on this, right? Uh, in our society, we've, we've said one, one spouse. Uh, in Muslim societies, it's four spouses. Um, you know, I, I'd also add, you know, who, who can you marry? You know, is it, can, it, can, I, can I marry a man? Can I marry a woman? Everybody has a different opinion. What can we live with? Tax rate, our favorite one, right? 0% tax rate, like some people think, 90% tax rate. What can you live with, right? Now, you guys, the fact that you're still in society means you can live with a tax rate that's not zero percent, right? Speedlum, okay, all of these things, okay, I, I don't have to belabor the point here, right? So, basically my point is, I, I hope I've established the following in your minds. Yes, yeah, society does things, society exists, markets exist, uh, they make decisions, 
and they make decisions which are different from everybody's individual decision, right? And, okay, inner subjectivity doesn't require everybody think exactly the same. If, if, if everybody thought exactly the same about something, everything would come to a halt. Commerce would come to a halt. Morality would come to a halt. It is good for us to subjectively disagree about things. This is why I like having a, a lot of Christians around. I like having a lot of Muslims around. I like having a lot of atheists around. Um, the subjective disagreement is the engine of intersubjective uh, agreement. It is what it's what powers the marketplace. It's what really, you know, gives our society its, its dynamism. All right. Yeah, so I'm out of time. So uh, I hope this clears up some questions about um, uh, intersubjectivity.